Howdy, everybody. Hello. Long time no see. We're uh, we're in the garden today. Yeah. And um, trying to make sure we get this so yep, you, you can see tilt us. This way a little bit. And even uh, lift it up a little bit so you can see everything. Yeah, you can see. They can see the gardens. You can see the gardens a little bit, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, you're right. Okay, I see what you're saying. Now. I'm right this time. It does happen occasionally. You get an award. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, so this is pretty much our uh, our new garden space behind us here. Oh, I'm yeah. just gonna This is a little wet this little... chair. We just oh, got is a it? we just got a little bit of um a little drizzle, kind of a rain. And um we've been getting like random rain right now and uh it's it hasn't been like where it's like too wet, but it's like just enough to where I don't have to water. It's, it's keeping things watered. Yeah. We've, so we've been super dry so far yeah. this summer up mm -hmm. until now. So yeah. it's been really nice to get some uh, to get some rain here. So I'm gonna get the Yeah, so up until about here. a week ago, um, Jason's gonna pull up comments just in case you guys have any questions. We're open to taking uh, any garden questions or any family questions you may have for us. Um, and uh, Lana and Sayla are going to play right over here so we can see them. And uh, um, No, they're actually, Sayla wants me to put on a movie for oh, her. Oh, okay. So. All right. Well, hopefully they behave for this. <laughs> they will. They, <laughs> they will. usually do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we've had a really, really dry um, be beginning and start to our garden season, but it's been very hot. And then up until this week, we all of a sudden started getting some rain here in southeast Wisconsin. Um, we are zone five, even though I always say zone four, because a lot of our winters end up being that anyway. Super cold, except for this last one. Yeah, yep. And we actually got you some know. rain. Uh, so Casey planted up the, uh, the cornfield and yeah. sunflowers. And we got some rain right after she finished. So that helped yeah. soak it in a little bit. And then we've been getting consistent rain. And we went out there and checked it out. And we got tiny little yep. um, corn sprouts that are coming up. So that was pretty cool too. Yeah, uh, so we have that see. new, uh, we'll be having that new video to share with you. Um, we, we pretty much filmed a lot of the planting of the front garden. And this year we did it differently. I intermixed the ornamental corn and sunflowers and we didn't have to buy any seed because we seed saved a whole field of seeds so yeah um, it was kind of nice so we just were like you know what since it's not really costing us anything let's just have fun with it so we seeded it and then we put a path down the middle of it that kind of zigzags through and we'll share that in the next video yeah. yep and um we figured we might as well kind of do it a little differently so we can enjoy it in different ways yeah so um Haley says, hey guys, hey Haley, um, hey Chris. Uh, Haley's got a question. Have you ever grown, and I'm not sure how to pronounce Where? that. Oh, right bougainvillea? There? No, we have bougainvillea. not. Bougainvillea. We have not grown that yet. Um, we just, this year, I feel like was like our biggest year to start more of like the landscape plants and perennials. Is my phone okay there? Um, yeah, it's just, uh, just dark. Yeah, okay, it's I just a little bit see. dark. I just want to so. make sure we don't cut out. And yeah. we're, we're on the charger. Yep. Um, so anyways, um, this is kind of our first year getting more into landscaping and Let's make sure it's doing more, charged. um, you got it? Yeah. More hardy, not, hardy charged. plants and everything like that for us here. And, um, so we'll, we'll kind of share that along the way, but we did plant some really cool new varieties um, on the berm in the front of the house and we'll share that with you guys as well because we're going to be getting mulch in tomorrow yes tomorrow we're going to get a pallet of mulch in so yeah we'll, and then uh, i figure um didn't mean to cut you off no that's okay i figure then um once it's mulch then we can kind of go ahead and, and share that project with you guys it'll just be that much cleaner and then you can see the plants better too yeah yep yeah you know? it'll it'll look a lot better like that yeah. Uh, yeah. So Julie asks, what water wand do we use? And I'll put the uh, I'll put the link for that in the description of, of the uh, the video. It's by Dram, mm -hmm. and it's a, a just a simple red end, and that one gives probably the nicest little shower. I, that, I like you know, it the best. Yeah. I, I just feel like it gives everything a good soaking. Um, so that's my favorite. Someone asks, do you cut Russian sage back to the ground or leave some of the woody part? 
I always leave some of the woody part, um, even though it kind of returns from the bottom. But if you do leave some of the woody part, you can have some return from there. Um, it's kind of like a, a personal preference. A lot of our areas that we've had it, I kind of just let it go. I, I We have a north side project garden that's been in project for four years. <laughs> yeah. But it's like one of those areas where we just keep adding extra things that we have at the end of the season and it just keeps growing bigger and growing larger yeah, with stuff. It, and it, it serves its purpose well for you know for where it is and Yeah and that's and that's an area where we don't really cut back a lot or clean it up too much. I kinda wanna just let it go wild but with a lot of like right. perennials and shrubs and that's where we have a couple plants of that and that's where I kind of just leave it. But here where we planted them, um, I'll probably leave them for the winter, but then cut down the, the stalks in the spring. I, I actually leave a lot of ev all of my perennials and shrubs over winter as is, and I don't trim until the next spring with a lot of those. So somebody asks, can we talk about the design process for our gardens? I'm new to gardening but have some property and would like to start a garden. So yeah, should we well, talk a little bit about what sure, we, uh, you, can you know, go ahead. okay. So, you know, one of the things that I would recommend is if you are, you know, if, if you're wanting to have a lot of gardens and if you want to be able to have the ability to expand and add new gardens, you kind of want to think about that, you know, mm -hmm. when you're first starting off. So when, when we first started our garden area, um, over on this side of the drive here, we have eight two foot tall raised beds. And we placed them strategically so that we could fit our ranger through there and, you know, dump new soil into the boxes. Like amend the yeah. soil and, um, and, and we made sure like there was enough spacing in between the beds, which is three feet. And for some people that may seem like a lot, but we really stuff our gardens full and have vegetables trailing on the sides. So, so sometimes you can't even get through. Sometimes we're just squeezing by right. when everything kind of grows So in. three feet's good because they're nice yeah. like aisles to go mm -hmm. through. And that, that was kind of our first, you know, garden area that we did. And then we expanded to what we have behind us here. And we've kind of been doing this in, in stages. This is almost like three different stages, what we have behind us here. Yeah. Um, and I think once you start off, you know, if you start with, um, you know, depending on the size of your property, start with, let's say, four raised beds. You know, you do that for the first year, see how you feel about it. You'll know mm -hmm. if, okay, that was definitely enough. I don't want to take on any more work or I, I want to expand and do some more. Well, then you can keep on, you know, kind of branching off of, off of yeah, that. Yeah, I think for us too, um, when, when doing our garden plan, always start off smaller and then grow from there because then you can kind of see what you can handle with your own schedule, whether you're at home or full-time working, that's gonna depend on how large you're gonna really want to go with your gardens. And when, when we first started our gardens here on, on this property, we pretty much knew that we wanted to start with food, but I always intermix flowers because I love flowers too. So that's kind of, you know, what we did, but I knew that we wanted to grow a lot of food because before that we were growing in a ground bed um, when we were renting my parents' farmhouse. And so I just wanted something that would stay cleaner, something that would be, create an experience for us. And we found that we had a lot of clay soil here. So that's actually the number one reason why we quickly just changed our minds to doing the raised beds because we were like, okay, how are we gonna grow Yeah, in this, clay soil yep. so um and we knew we wanted our gardens to be viewed from the house so we knew the side of the house we wanted it to be on which is the south and west side sun and it's the sunny you know those are those are like the sunniest directions for the sun which is perfect for a garden and then once we added those um we knew that we wanted to continue adding garden gardens on our property from the beginning so that's why you'll always see like a large stone space in between the gardening spaces because that's actually a driveway so there's regular gravel there and we keep that open for expansion so that way you know big landscape trucks tree trucks all that kind of stuff they have room to come in here and drive through right and then when we're finally feel like we're a little bit more complete 
we'll fill in that middle because I have an idea for a, a ginormous, huge, long pergola that I want yeah, to do. Yeah, and we're we're getting middle. close to that point. So are we? I think so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think we are. He has no idea what I've got <laughs> planned for him. <laughs> um, one of the other things I would recommend, and this is something that that Casey always does, is she will she'll take a piece of paper and basically take and, and draw your you know draw your house, draw your, your yard where you're going to put the gardens mm -hmm. and sketch some stuff out so that you can kind of see bird's eye view and make sure what you want to do works there. And I think it, it helps you start to get your, your mind going with things. And I know we, we vary from that quite a bit, but it's, yeah. it's a good starting good point start. at least to kind of see what, what you want to do there. And so. always start with what you like to, to eat. You know, a lot of people are new to gardening this year I've found and, and so many with the same question of, well, where do I start? What should I grow? Um, the best advice I can give you is just, if you're just starting, grow what you already like to eat. There's no point in growing broccoli if you hate hate it. Right, you know? yes. Oh, yep. grow broccoli, it's easy. Oh, okay, I'll grow bro broccoli and then all of a sudden it produces and you're like, oh, well, I don't really like eating it, but it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so like always grow what you like to eat. Right. So if, if you like cucumbers, you know, just know that they produce a lot for one plant. So you may only need one plant of a cucumber. Or um, if you if you like um, peppers, then, you know, grow a few plants of peppers. Or you like peas, you know. Just stick to, to what you like to eat. And that's my best advice that I can give you. And, and go from there. Then pick out some of the flowers that you like and, you know, look them up find out if they're a beneficial or maybe they're edible there's a lot of things that you can learn about plants that you know you may not have known about your favorite plants before so uh somebody asks do i need to deadhead and i'm thinking they meant to say geranium add right? geranium oh okay me. never mind um it does help um, it'll help it actually produce more flowers, but with adgeratum, they, they can just keep going. But like anything, when you snip off anything dead, it helps the plant focus on the actual living part of the plant and helps it, you know, continue to produce and do well with flowering. So Samantha King says, good afternoon from Mississippi. I'm moving to Wisconsin in the fall. Oh, awesome. Well, welcome to Wisconsin. When you get here in fall is, is a amazing time yeah. here. Yeah, um, she's is. not looking forward to the winters and nobody that lives here does either. So, <laughs> well, I mean, well, so, okay. Not so the every, whole winter. Everybody dreads <laughs> the winters here and I understand they do get long, but um, I think it's, it's all in the way that you look at it. If you dread it, you're going to hate it. But if you look at it as, okay, well, it's a cooler time. So you know what? I worked all summer. I grew this entire garden. I throw stuff. I can stuff. Or say you're just outside. You're busy. We're all busy in summer. Everyone's got so much going on in summer. Winter comes and it's kind of like that little bit of like that break, that little bit of, oh, I can take a deep breath. And, you know, with Christmas time, it also gets busy with Thanksgiving, then Christmas. It's the June and February where sometimes people feel like it stretches on and it's long, but that's your time to start looking at some good gardening ideas, start your garden designs or order your seeds. Um, you know, get excited for what's coming. Yeah, you know, so, you know, kind of going off of what Casey was saying, we will actually have some things on our website that you'll be able to order in the winter. Um, or, or at least getting then? it 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 should be. I mean we'll keep you posted. We're working on something where we'll have our, our own um We're line of plants and yeah. flowers and you would be able to go on to our website and purchase, you know, we'll we'll kinda do a tour of what we would be offering so you can see it in our gardens and it's an alternative to going to the garden center. We've been dabbling a little bit with it and have had some uh, fruit trees and plants delivered this year just kind of wanted to test it out and see how it uh how it was and how the experience was and we've been really happy with it so it's something that uh we're gonna kind of you know touch on a little bit we'll yeah, we'll keep just, you posted with that there's so. a lot of directions right now that we can go and um so for us we're we're kind of trying to focus in on a few of those directions that would be the most beneficial with all of the types of questions that we get and that would help all of you and make make things a little easier because I always feel like that's one thing is when it comes to gardening and someone's new it can seem like overwhelming and in and, and hard you know which it is hard work but it should also be like 
really enjoyable and a, and a re relaxing experience, you know. Right, overall, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so somebody asks, uh, they have fruit trees in containers. How often and what should I use for plant food or fertilizer? Um, so we've been actually using the Agro Thrive, and we've only had a few fruits growing in containers um, the whole time we've been gardening. The only fruits that we've grown, grown in containers are lemon trees and strawberries and that's probably about it and I, we we've been using agro thrive now before that we've used espoma um, with berries you want to go more of an acidic um, fertilizer there's so many different organic options out there you don't have to be organic but that we just like that with our food we just feel a little better about it right um, but there's there's a lot of options out there but other than that this is actually our first year growing fruit trees in the ground yeah and we have um, an apple tree which is doing great and then we have a cherry tree which um, died because when we planted it um, we ended up getting a whole week of hardcore frost and freezing weather and snow and ice and it, it, was, it, it just it killed, killed it. it. Yeah. So, so that's all right. We'll get another one <laughs> yeah. and we will, uh, we'll figure it out. I'm, so. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually not a fruit tree expert, but we do grow a lot of fruit like strawberries. I feel like we're really good at strawberries. Blueberries, um, this is actually our second time growing blueberries. The first time we grew blueberries, I actually forgot about our blueberry patch. And that was like our first year <laughs> when um, we moved here. And that was like when we just had Lana. So I was a first time mom. And you know, I just thought I was like busier than anyone in the world. And now I have two kids and I'm like, why did I think I was so busy then? You know? <laughs> that was nothing. <laughs> I know. Um, so we're actually, we actually brought the blueberries back, which we will show you in the June garden tour video. We just filmed that last, last night. night. Yep. And that'll be coming out real soon. Yes. So. Um, hello, Julie from St. Paul. She asks about the, uh, the garden light setup that we have. So, um, along with the, the red hose end, I'll also put the link for the garden lights as well in the description. So those, uh, those lights we just got on Amazon, but we did get a, a heavy duty outdoor set. So I'll, yeah. I'll post the link for the ones that we ended up using there. I um, like, I like that they're heavy duty too, because we actually use them all winter. Cause we, right, that's we leave, a good point. we leave our gardens in and, um, we don't really do like a big, we didn't do a big cleanup last year and we really liked it because then it, we found that it brought more nature and wildlife to the gardens and it just didn't look like these empty boxes all, yeah, all winter so and that was kind of a trial. It was, it was. You and know? so one thing that we were saying was, and we really, I haven't thought about it until right now until you said that, but the one thing that we were saying was, well, you know, we've never done that before. Is it going to affect how, you know, things are growing out here? Well, things do as well. Well, we have both said to each other the last couple days here that the gardens feel like they're ahead of, of where they normally are. Like we feel like they're, they're bigger. July size instead of June. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be able to just leave everything again this year like we did last yeah. winter because it just looked so much nicer it as opposed to just having the all these empty raised beds and i always look at them like they just look like a bunch of caskets out there because there's oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nothing in them <laughs> and so to have like some height and volume in there and then the lights on and it's then when still it's a snows, nice view and when it snows it just feels like this winter wonderland yeah. it always just feels magical um, and you know, at the end of the gardening season too, it's like, you know, we were busy seed saving and getting the greenhouse ready and, um, you know, cleaning up the gardens wasn't exactly something I was excited to do. No. I was, I was kind of wore out and just wanted to be in the greenhouse. So, you know, by the time the winter was over and it was time to come out, you know, on the first nice day, we were like, yeah, let's go. Right. Clean the we gardens. had something to do. It was we too early excited. to plant. It's not like we could have been planting then. Right. So, you know, might as well. Might as it well. Was, it was fun, yeah. Soila Margaritas says so she's so happy to see us. Hey, same here. Thanks for visiting yeah. us and watching today. Yep. It means so much to us. And Ruth from Georgia says I have a nectarine tree. Sounds amazing in a two quart pot. Um, in March I got around to planting it and I broke the thin trunk. How do I tell if it's dead? It came wrapped in a net sock and root is inside. Well. I'm I mean, unsure. I, this well, is I a, can oh, answer. You know? I mean, oh, okay. with a tree, I mean, speaking with 
you know, our cherry tree that just died, if, if it's dead, you know, the, the leaves are gonna turn brown and you can actually take your thumbnail and you can scrape away a little bit of the, uh, of the bark. And if it's not green, it's dead. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing you can do right away. You can scrape away with your thumbnail a little bit of the bark. If it's not green, it's dead. And even if it is green, it could still be drying. So you just, the only thing you can really do is wait you, you can tape it up, you know, wait yeah. it out and see. But yeah. it's, you know, trees are, are pretty finicky when they're that small too. This and, is my first year with so. fruit trees. So I am not an expert with fruit trees. I'm learning right along with you guys. And we're going to share our trials with it as they, as they grow. Um, so for us, we're... You know, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but if anybody's watching that would be able to help, um, please feel free to help her and put it in the comments below for us. Yes. We'd like to learn too. So Vanessa, <laughs> we're need to know. <laughs> yeah, we will need to know that. <laughs> Vanessa asks, do we stop fertilizing in hot weather? I'm in Arizona using shade cloth. Average high is low 100s right now and haven't fertilized in a while. I'm always so tempted to though. Oh, I never stop fertilizing um i follow the directions so on the agro thrive that we're using this year it's every you know seven to 14 days so i do like a 10 to 12 day amount of time um and we just throw that onto the beds we mix it up throw it on and then i water it in and that's yeah it. so i don't think you know and because of of what we use it's a liquid fertilizer and, and, you know, even after it's mixed with water and applied, it still gets watered in. So I don't yeah. feel like that would burn it's, anything it's because like of a, the No, the it's heat. like a, um, it's like a fish emulsion and it, it, it's like kind of liquefied, but it doesn't smell it like doesn't. that. It doesn't. But so, um, that's just for our edible beds though. So with my flowering containers, um, I am not organic with those because we don't have any food in them. And so we use the Jack's Bloom Booster. And for that, um, we continuously fertilize. So we're on a, every third time that we water them, um, which isn't that mu that often right now because we are- With our, the rain and- Yeah, I mean, our stuff's just kind of starting to root. And as it roots in more over the season, things need more water, obviously. So. Um, as we start watering more, then we start fertilizing more. Yep. So, with what, Sayla? Julie asks. She's gonna die. Who? Lana. What are you talking about? She is. She's doing a. How soon? Okay. The, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go check this out. How soon do the female flowers open for the Howden pumpkins? My male flowers have opened up. Well, I they should be all opening kind of around the same time. Um, sometimes, you know, you just have to kind of wait it out a little bit. I know that happened with some of my zucchinis in the beginning. So what I actually did today is um, I went and took a Q-tip, or actually with my zucchinis, I, I started off with a Q-tip, but um, I went and took the male flower and peeled back all the flowers so it just revealed um, the pollen. And I took that and I kind of jabbed it inside of the female flowers. And I kind of had to self-pollinate it that way because all the male flowers were already kind of closed up when the female flowers were wide open and ready for, you know, the pollination. So I did that today. So if you're having that problem, once your female flowers start, then that might be a good idea for you to try out. So um, maybe even starting to plant some more pollinators around those gardens. And um, for us, we saw a ton of bees in the beginning, but these past couple days, I haven't seen as many. And I think it's because they're out in our wild areas. All of our honeysuckle is in blossom and it's like, that's where they're drawn to. So when you even like drive through those areas, it smells so sweet and- uh, Everything's, um, there was nothing. Nothing at Nothing all. Nothing wrong, yeah. Sayla, our uh, yeah. little prankster. But, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, did you get to the question yep. about the secret in growing bell peppers? Oh, no. I never see. So, is there a secret with growing bell peppers? Um, I don't really do anything special other than, um, you know, in our raised beds, we plant them about eight inches apart. And I always make sure to use my little hand rake around them. So, if like, the dirt gets hard and firm around them. I like to make sure that um, 
the dirt stays a little loose around there, especially right before I go and fertilize. That way I know it's like really absorbing into the soil um, rather than, you know, when you water or fertilize and it's really tough and hard on the surface of the soil, you go and water and fertilize. You don't know how far it's really soaking in there. So by kind of, you know, and not that you're working up inches down, it's just the surface to kind of rough it up a little bit. It allows it to kind of, you know, aerate the soil a little bit, allows nutrients to kind of flow in there. A lot of times I like to do that right before it rains too. So that way, you know, when it rains, the rain water, water soaks right in rather than splashes up everywhere and doesn't soak in as much. Right. Um, as you're talking about your raised beds, what's on the bottom? How do you deal with gophers? Well, we don't actually have any gopher issues here, which which is good. Uh, but I think, I mean, if we did, because they're they're two foot tall, I mean, I don't no, you know could still, that you could you still know. get problems. Yeah. yeah, ours are open to the ground, but um, we always had the problems with the mice. Right, right. Um, and now we that we've got, got the, the cat, I mean, and that would probably a cat probably scare off gophers too. I mean, the cat's not going to eat them, but. The gophers may not, you know, come around if that... Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure. But if anybody else deals with gophers and has a great solution, please feel free to share that in the comments below. All right. Let's see here. Um, do you finish the wood you use for your raised beds to prevent water damage? No. Um, we don't, actually. We, we haven't done any type of a, of a finish on it at some point down the road they'll you know they'll need to be rebuilt but i don't think that's going to be for for quite some time our, um, our first our first eight we're going on year six or seven with them six ah uh, six yep year six with them and i don't know i'm almost thinking that they don't even look near needing any replacement no i think we still have quite a few years with there yeah. so um, oh, somebody from Cape Town, South Africa. That is really wow. cool. That's Tracy. amazing. Tracy, yeah. Hi there. Um, I'm in Ohio and just found two Japanese beetles. Does the Monterey work for those? Um, it should. I, I, you, I, okay, so my biggest thing, and I feel like I've been fighting this war on cucumber beetles here. And thrips. And well, thrips is just ongoing. You can never really get rid of them. You can just keep them under control. Um, so our, our biggest thing is the cucumber beetles, which is another type of a beetle. So for us, we really um, use the Monterey, and I also got this neem oil by Bliss. Was that by Bliss? It's like uh, a, I believe so. It's like a neem oil mixture by Bliss, and there I get all the high concentrate, so I can mix my own in my own sprayer. And um, so the Monterey is more like one that you spray on the plant and so is the neem oil one, but I also do a soil soak as well. Um, a lot of times like for the cucumber beetles, they like to hide out um, near the surface of the soil and the stem of the plant. And that's kind of where like they start eating, eating it up, especially when they're like youngsters. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yep. And, then, and then they just give them kind of like a really bad look and pretty much kill them. Um, so I, I actually did mix both of those and they did help, but I had to also go ahead and start catching some as well in jars. I was out here like a maniac and trying to chase them around and <laughs> it took two weeks. So being organic is like really tough. So another thing that would hurt what, or help would be, um, the, um, the 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 powder the diatomaceous part powder is that what's called di uh, yeah so that's something that we were going to actually go ahead and try next but now I don't see them so I think I got them under control yeah well so I see a couple other um, questions and comments about pests so we'll we'll put a link for what we use with that that neem oil yeah. and the Monterey just so that we can you know yep. show you what we just uh, remember we that when you use and... even organic sprays do it at night when the pollinators are out of there because as soon as it's dry it's fine but when it's wet it, it could hurt them so you just want to always be careful with how you use anything even right. if it is organic even with the um the diatomaceous earth powder <clears throat> you know it, it's fine on the surface of the soil but you know, if you're putting it on the leaves, you, you, you still have to be very careful because that's going to stay on those leaves. So sometimes people will net their plant and then they'll have to self-pollinate because if bees come in there, then it can hurt the bees. 
So, I mean, just be mindful of how you apply and do and use Right, and anything. it's an ongoing thing, too. You don't just spray once and that takes care of it. You yeah. gotta, you know, you, you want to stay mm -hmm. in a routine, especially with the organic stuff. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming a full-time job, I told Jason. And um, <laughs> because it's like an ongoing battle, but I always feel like by mid-July, everything is so balanced out. I feel like it always takes so long for beneficial bugs to come back into the garden but the bad bugs are like it's spring i'm here you know <laughs> right it's they like, get here first they get here first they do the damage and then you gotta kind of you know fight yeah. against them and, and uh, i think um i think if if we end up having another problem i'm gonna order in some ladybugs and some lace wings some i need some extra support in the garden and then go i'm to gonna work yep and then yep. i'll hold off on any spray and let them go to work yeah uh so any tips for honeysuckles i have four total on my garden they grew so much this year should i cut them short next spring i have a wall for them to cover so i'm okay with their huge size yeah so i just let mine go um that's another thing i don't i don't ever cut back my honeysuckles if it's getting too large for your space it is able to be trimmed down. You can kind of shape it and control it if you want. It does not hurt it. Um, we've actually done that before. My parents grew one up north at their cabin. Remember when it would grow? Yes. It would yep. grow up like this um, little um, lattice wall and onto the deck and it started like covering their view. So um, they actually cut it like kind of minimalized it down to like a, a smaller section and it still lives today and does beautifully. Right. So. Yep. Um, Denzi says, Hey guys, finally made it. Woohoo. Awesome. <laughs> How do you deadhead cannas? I think that's a great oh, question. So, um, with the cannas, I actually just <clears throat> cut that whole stalk all the way down. Unless there's another bud of flowers starting along that thick stem. So I just, um, say there is nothing else coming into blossom on that stem. I go all the way down to the, to the bottom of that set of leaves cut it right there and take it off because the next time the canna is going to blossom is from another set of canna leaves. Very good. Um, hi there from the Netherlands. Hello. Major problems with white flies on my tomatoes. What would you use against yeah, that? Yeah, try, try the Monterey. The Monterey as well. That okay, helps. so I'll, I'll, I'll for sure, as soon as we're done with this, I'll put the mm -hmm. link in the description for the Monterey. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, and to get um, a lot of these organic um options to really hold and stick a little bit longer always add in a little bit of a mild soap we tend to use the myers hand soap it's a very gentle mild soap and by adding that in it kind of gives it more of like a um it, it helps it stick to the plant for a lot longer so right which is what you need because mm -hmm. as soon as the bugs then start to eat the leaves that the, still have it, it, it on holds, there it holds that right there yep. yeah um, so somebody commented about the uh, the gophers. I make gopher baskets to protect the roots of the plants and put chicken wires under the raised bed. So oh, that's, that's that sounds like a good. So it's still open, but they can't get through the. Uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So line the bottom of the bed with the chicken wire. Yeah. Um, do you have a video on how to grow the flowering kale? Um, not not specifically, but we do have. Um, you know videos showing planting up the the raised beds yeah. with the kale so i mean um specifically like what would you want to know about how to grow it um from seed i mean because we do show that in our seeding video i'm pretty sure we have that ah, in there. okay and then um <clears throat> we show us um planting it i'm pretty sure in a few containers um if not <clears throat> let us know we'll we'll definitely help you out there so just give us a little detail of what more you'd like on that yep uh, my hanging basket petunias mm -hmm. look like heck, despite deadheading and fertilizing weekly. Hmm. Well, um, it you know could, how... Could be it bugs. Could, it, yeah, it could be thrips. It could be aphids. So just aphids are easy to see. You, they're very small, but you can still see them. They cluster a lot around the, the heads of buds and blossoms and along the stems of a plant. Um, the thrips are really hard to see. You'd mainly see them if you look at a flower, put it close and blow hot air on it like this. And then move away. And if little thin 
very, very tiny little thin bugs start crawling out of that flower, you have thrip. And right. check multiples because a lot of times it's like a silent killer. You don't see it until like it's too late because your your basket may even start looking a little wilty, have brown leaves, not as many blossoms, and it's just not growing as much. It stunts everything about a plant. Right. The other the other thing is maybe if it's in an area where it's not getting a lot of wind and full sun, maybe it's you know being overwatered. Overwatered could be a big one because that's yep. actually the number one killer for um, <clears throat> any kind of plant is actually overwatering. So. Always just check to, you know, like I have a basket that dries out every day, but since the weather got a little cooler this week, we've had on and off little drizzle. It's actually been every other day or every day and a half. So I actually just, right now it's so rooted that I can't like put my finger in the soil. <clears throat> I'm gonna need water soon. <laughs> I'll go get some. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I can't get my finger in that soil. So no hose, get out of here, come on now. <laughs> I'm not a dog. <laughs> um, it's so rooted now, so I can't get my finger in there to really feel for the moisture. So what I do is I actually pat it down like you would like a sponge, and I really feel. And if I feel that moisture, then I don't water it. Um, but if I if I it, or if I don't feel it, I water it. But if I do feel it, then um, I don't water it. So you just always have to kind of be careful with the watering because that can be kind of like a that's like the main thing that people kill their plants with. So let's see. I bought the fertilizer injector and wondering how do you mix your food in the five gallon bucket? So every fertilizer injector is different. Um, so it'll tell you how much water it puts out per gallon or how much it pumps per gallon. And um, so for ours, we thank you. You're welcome. So one second. So for ours, Okay. We. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, so I dump about uh, a cup of, of the Bloom Booster in when I'm doing my, um, my containers. And I'll fill it about a third of the way. And I make sure, even if I just let it sit and say you didn't use it all, every time I go to use it, I be, I'm always sure to mix before um, <clears throat> I go ahead and turn on that hose to water. So. Yep. But every injector is different, so just look at your um, pumping, what is it, pumping what per gallon? What is it, the water? Oh, the gallons. Gallons the, per minute, The gallons right? per minute, yep. Yeah, and ours is, what was it? Ours about? is 11. 11 gallons, gallons per, per minute, minute is what it is what the mm -hmm. output is. Mm -hmm. So some of them, some of them can, can basically pump more than others, which I think just gives you more, more pressure. Um, and maybe if you had one that was pumping more per minute than another, you could maybe have two hoses working off of it. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not super familiar with this. Is the actually the first year that that we've had, had to kind of control our own, right? Because right. my dad's always con controlled it, had it ready for me. You know, I mean, I was very all we had to do was mix the that. fertilizer and the water <laughs> and stick it in there. I so know. I had questions for my dad already this year because ours is a little different, and I'm like, you know. It doesn't look like when the water comes out, I don't really, I used to, I used to see just like a little shimmer of blue, not a lot, but just a little. And with this one, I see nothing. I'm like, but I'm putting a little more in because it's pumping more gallons per minute and, or less gallon, less gallons per minute. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I, I just, I don't want to over fertilize. So I'm just under fertilizing probably a little bit. If I feel like things look like they need a little extra fertilizer that I'm, I might just Mix yeah, well, then you know that it is that it, it is light, but yeah. I mean everything's looking amazing, so yeah. I think it's. And yeah. I've actually only fertilized my flowering plants, um, maybe twice so far since we've had the gardens going, um, because we've, I, things are so small that they didn't need to be watered as often. They don't really need a ton of water until their their roots are growing in and they require more water right. for growth. Right. So. Um, so somebody said I almost grew a pumpkin today. I noticed the plant is dying. Oh, no. It was already bigger than a softball No, oh, I know I I mean so I, I feel it, you. Yeah, you know? we, we do I mean, I would say it's you know, and I'll let Casey go after me, but it's probably some type of bug um, I know with ours 
sometimes when, when they're little, and, and Casey actually just sprayed ours last week, but the cucumber beetle is one that can be um, detrimental to the, to the pumpkins, right? And what other... Yeah, um, I mean, it could also be a powdery mildew, um, so maybe just check check that but cucumber beetles are the number one thing that tend to destroy pumpkin plants right um, so just check for a pest or a, a mildew issue and sometimes sometimes that's it this year we did grow more mildew resistant pumpkins but I do have like two varieties in there that aren't so I'm hoping I didn't screw up that way <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> they're looking great so far we will give you guys yeah. an update on that and i did things a little differently as you saw in one of the past videos where in the holes i did the garden mixture which is like topsoil and compost mixed together but then i did a trial roll where it was just um you know just the soil that was already in the garden and the ones that are growing in the compost are took off and produced so much faster well not produced they took off so much faster than the ones that were seeded in just the the soil right right and but i haven't fertilized them either usually we do it like a, some type of a dry fertilizer out there before starting the pumpkins but i really wanted to do things completely different and i've been i've been youtubing like a few different you know ideas and i'm just kind of rolling with it now so right. we're gonna just document it and they, they look good, so I, I think we just kind of let them go. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you got to, of course, continue to check them. And we go out there often, and you can look on the leaves and look closely. And if you see bugs, then, yeah. you know, you need to do something. Otherwise, they will, they yeah. will take them down. They will. Um, so somebody asks about a certain type of berry. Um, their plants producing very few berries. Any tips? Um, what kind of berry? It's a like a uh, strawberry or what? Quinault. Quinault berries. I've never tried them. Are they yeah. like a strawberry or? Um, my first, they... my first thing that popped into my head would have been fertilizing. Fertilizing you know? always helps. Um, whether you're organic or not, there's options for both. This year for our strawberries, we used um, we tried out the Agro Thrive, which was the first year trying out that fertilizer and that's because they actually sent us a trial to see if we liked it so I'm like well why not try it on the strawberries and we did and they're producing and performing really well they are yes yeah yep we've been very very happy with that now I'll put a link for that in the uh, in the video as well you there's better write this down oh, you're gonna I got them oh. I got them I'm on I'm on it <laughs> um, so there's two different kinds of agro thrive there's agro thrive for um, you know, for your uh, veggies, and then there is one for everything else. So basically, we use the one trees, for perennials. We use um, the one for the vegetables. Right. For, so there's one for fruit and vegetables, basically for for food. Which is the one I've used. Yep. And then Definitely. the other one is you know anything else that's not so pumpkins. Yeah. Um, trees. Any anything. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything else that that you, that you nope, put it as on, long so. as you follow the directions yep you know um let's see here uh working on training a wisteria vine into a tree form i am doing this oh. in a container any advice wow that sounds amazing yeah um we've we've had our wisteria for let's see now is this its third year i think fourth. so no it's its fourth year okay and it didn't take well it was doing fine, but it never really took off until last year because we finally added a trellis where it was. Before that, I just planted it, and I'm like, you know what? The the first and second year, they never really do too much, and then by the third year, it's like, you know, they take off. So that's the year that Jason then built that little trellis thing with the panel wire. Yep. And it's doing so awesome now. Um, so I guess if you wanted to train it in that way, I mean, it gets really woody. You'd probably, I don't know if you're talking about having it freestanding. I've never seen it freestanding. We just have it where it's like train to trail, trail over. Yeah. I mean, I guess you know? what, what you would want to do if you were, if you wanted to make it look like a tree is, you know, I'd put some type of a, uh, maybe a four by four yeah. um, or even a, a two by four, you know, certain height that you can, have it run up which would look like the trunk and then you could actually 
you know, fasten wires or something like that to... Yeah, real you know, crazy there. Well, I, I mean... Jason, the mad it'll scientist. Work. It'll work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think... Okay, she's growing it in a container, so a 2 by 4 or a 4 by 4 probably won't work. In okay, there. So, so like a garden stake type thing, you know, like a... Yeah, something you know, to one stake by one. it. You're going to want something to stake it. Always, it'll get floppy, even though the bottom is really sturdy. If you're not looking for it to trail, then you'll probably want it to like cut it back a little bit. Um, but ours gets really um, thick, like a like a tree on on the bottom roots. But then after that, they get real airy and real soft. And mm -hmm. even though like once they trail and climb into that trellis, it becomes like a really hard, thick branch almost. Yeah. Yep. You know. Yep. To where I mean. I'm trying to think how you could just I, I think just wiring it so like if it's in there maybe put a wire around the top where like it starts branching out and then maybe just have like a wire kind of like you know kind of holding the branch up a little bit and maybe mm -hmm. connecting them should work yeah I've never I've never tried that now yeah. you have me really trying to get creative here <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here um Tomato plants look great, but there is no fruit. Do you think it's the heat? He's in Texas. For growing tomatoes, um, the plants look great, but there is no fruit. Well, um, I mean, maybe give them a little bit more time and some fertilizer and... Are there um, any Are there any flowers? Do you see any, you know, so the foliage looks yeah. good, but are there any of the yellow flowers? Yep, and yet? do you have that's... any bees on them? If you haven't seen many bees, you may want to self-pollinate, which... All we really do is use the Q-tip, or you can even use a paintbrush, so you go from flower to flower to flower, um, and try to like, um, if you have two plants that are by each other too, they're kind of the same, just, you know, go from plant to plant. Um, but I mean, that's probably all it can be. Yeah, I you mean, know, if it's healthy, it kind of, that's a little confusing. Somebody else actually has a really similar question. Um, they're not in as warm of a, of a climate. I'm a first time gardener and I'm sure I killed my tomato plants. Don't know what to snip off. I have no flowers, but beautiful leaves help. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, it, I, I mean, either it's maybe just wait a little bit longer depending on how long it's been planted because you know, depending on tomato varieties, they all produce at different times. So some are, you know, like celebrity is like a fast, you know growing tomato and it produces within like 55 days you know and then and then there's like the the beef steak which is like an 80 some day or 75 day tomato you know like all tomatoes kind of take a little bit longer to produce so maybe that could possibly be the variety you have um, I would try like fertilizing it a little bit um, you know, and like Jason said, if you see the flowers, you know, that's an indication that you're going to be getting some or even some buds or anything like that anywhere. Otherwise, right. I'm unsure about that. Like a lot of our tomatoes. So I did a, a big trial this year. We, we, last year we had the country gardens magazine photo shoot. So I didn't do a lot of like, you know, like trialing. I did more of like, you know, this is what works. This is what's beautiful. This year I'm having more fun with doing like some trials and we try to like, we, we try a lot of things that people say you're not supposed to do just to kind of like, you know, well, can you? Because yeah. there's some things that we've done in the past that you actually can get away with. Yep. Um, but so one of our trials this year is, you know, um, growing all of our tomatoes in one raised bed. We're not staking them. We've actually had just as much of a harvest of our tomatoes from cages to the ones that just grow down the two foot high raised beds. So we're growing them off the edges of the two foot high raised beds, but I just stuffed it to the max. And I know everybody's gonna just say like, you know, duh, that doesn't work. But we have so many like flowers, tomatoes forming. And the only thing is they have like that little um, curly leaf thing. Yes, which and, we're not quite sure what it is. But the curly, but the curly leaf from what I'm reading, it, it just, it, it sounds like it's something that isn't a problem because our tomatoes are still producing. If they weren't producing, then I'd be a little bit more nervous. But um, they say that that can come from um, like heavy winds and um, heat. heat. And that's 
what we had a lot of the whole first month of the growing season. It was hot and these crazy winds. We have no protection, so we just get like crammed right. with wind here. Yep. And um, and and they went through a lot, and they kind of are showing that little bit of distress. So. Um, I'm kind of just thinking that that's what it is because nothing else looks wrong with them. They don't have any mold or right, bugs. We checked for or... bugs. That was the first thing yep. because... No spots. Yeah. If, uh, usually you know. if you see leaves start to, to curl, yeah. one of the first things that you'll look for yeah. is thrips. Yeah. And um, they, they look so healthy and great other than the curl on the leaves. So, yep. um, so yeah. someone asks, is there a way to save my clematis after clematis wilt? I I transplanted it from mother who had had it for years on end, so I wanted to save it if possible. Okay, so if you just transplanted it, if, if, if that's the case, um, all plants will go through a transitional period, look wilty for a while. Um, a lot of plants, whenever we transplant them, get kind of like that look like they're dying or they may not make it, but just give them a little bit of time. Don't just keep dousing it with water because it's wilted and it looks dry. Check it with your finger. If the root system looks dry, like color of soil looks dry, um, then give it water. But um, just treat it like you would as if it weren't wilting. Um, with our, I, I dug up a lot of our um, our Rebecca's to add just a few areas of them onto our new berm. And you know, when we transplanted them, they were just laying on the ground, wilted. They looked absolutely dead. But I just kept at it, kept watering them. And all of a sudden, like two weeks later, now all of a sudden they're starting to pop up. There's some brown on them. They're not gonna look perfect this year, but next year they'll come back and they'll show off for us and yeah. they'll do okay. Yep. And that's the same with your clematis because you're transplanting it into somewhere else. Give it some time to adjust and don't expect perfection this year, but um, by next year, you'll start see it starting to return. It may take a couple of years for it to adjust, but um, because perennials do sometimes take a little bit longer, but um, I think it'll be okay for you. So, yeah. um, so back to the to the berries. So yeah, I think they are strawberries, is what I oh, okay. is what I thought she said. Um, <coughs> someone else said I had the same question before. I found out that most berry plants need a mate plant. They tend to do a lot better and be more fruitful. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. If you've got one as opposed to having two or three, you know, yeah. I mean, when we've always planted them, we've always done at least, you know, three and probably even more than that. Oh, so way they, more than that, you know, yeah. They've always each, taken off. Each and, bed starts off with about 15 plants, but um, with strawberries, too, say you want a big bed of strawberries, um, even then, though, you only need a few plants because they start shooting out shoots and runners which create more plants so they multiply very quickly in in just we planted our strawberries three years ago and we planted i think about 12 plants per um three feet wide by 14 feet long beds and we didn't even need that many you know yeah we would right. have been fine with just it's, six it's like a jungle in there <laughs> which is great you know it's great yeah <laughs> um yeah. let's see here um, so people are commenting about the tomato stuff, so that's great. You know, I'm sure there's some good good advice there with that. Um, let's see, there's also a spray for it. Um, Silver Tongue Daywalker, hello, how are you doing? Good evening from England. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so how is the weather there in England? Because um, I know that you've always said that it's really rainy, and um, I'm wondering how it is there, because today it's... I always like knowing the temperatures and the the climates other places right now because yeah. we're finally warm and usually I feel like we're cold. Yeah. So it's it's fun to see what everybody else is kind of feeling right I now outside. I agree. Yep. Um, so she does ask, um, some of our sunflower leaves have gone yellow starting at the bottom. Too much water I am thinking. I have read that fish fertilizer helps with the soil. That's kind of what the agro thrive is. It's it's a fish fertilizer. Yeah. Um, so, does the rest of the plant look okay? Um, the only reason why I'm wondering is because as our sunflowers grow, the bottoms of the le the bottom leaves always get yellow, which then turn into brown because they kind of retire. A lot of the energy is going into growing up in the new leaves, and it's really focusing in on 
the sunflower head that it will be creating because really a sunflower is a food and so a lot of, all of its energy is really put into having it grow up and produce that food so the leaves that it first started out with um, will end up getting yellow and mainly because as the plant grows it kind of shades those bottom plants leaves so they're not getting as much sun either so um, when leaves don't get as much sun they get a little bit more yellow and what we always do is we actually take those leaves off and we like to see through the um, the sunflower stalks. Yeah. So this is this is I'll I'll provide links for both, but um, it's even got a sunflower on it, so it's got to work for sunflowers, <laughs> right? <laughs> so this is the uh, fruiting and flowering fertilizer, and then this is for everything else. So between the two of them, it's got everything covered. So um, this one is actually for. The, we use it shows the veggies for the strawberries. Yes. So for tomatoes, strawberries. <laughs> we did use this for both our tomatoes and strawberries. Yep. So we did that trial in the greenhouse. We did two of the exact same tomato plants with espoma. And then we did two of the exact same tomato plants with the agro thrive. Same pot, same amount of fertilizing. Um, and I didn't really notice that big of a difference. Um, cause we have always used the Espoma cause Espoma, we tried out their liquid one. I've never tried their liquid one. Yep. It was always the dry one, but this year I wanted to try that against the liquid egg roll thrive. And the only difference we saw was the production was the same, but the growth on the one with the egg roll thrive, um, those ones got just a little bit more foliage, right? Yeah. They got a little bit bigger and a little you know. bit, but not like too much of right. a difference where I'm like, Oh, you got to you know. Right, right. Um, we, where, we were like, happy. They were both very good. Yes, definitely. <clears throat> um, so, okay, so she says that it's really hot in <clears throat> uh, in England there. So just, oh, just so you know. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Uh, Cindy Dunn, hi there. Good to, uh, good to see you. Aww. Um, she asks if both of us edit our videos. I always enjoy the music and <gasps> editing. Happy Aww. summer, finally. So I know Casey's really happy to hear that you Thank like the you. editing because she Thank spends, you. she does all of the <laughs> editing and she spends a lot of time doing that. And she's definitely a perfectionist with it. And one of the things that, you know, Casey does when she edits is she tries to give our videos uh, more of a, a show like feel. So, you know, having that music mixed in and she's, she's always trying to provide like a feel you know the feel that that we have when we're actually out here mm -hmm. experiencing like last night we had a fire and we were just hanging out with the family it was a beautiful night and it just felt amazing so she tries to translate that you know into the videos and so with her editing and the music i feel like she does a great job with it oh, so thank you yeah and I, i'm really happy to hear that you're enjoying it and i know yeah. we haven't put out as many videos this this month we've only been putting out one a week but that was because we had so many projects that we were working on so we really just tried documenting the projects and now we're able now that those are kind of like they kind of died down there's still yeah. like some little loose ends that tie up but they're kind of died down to where now we can focus on the actual gardening videos you know like the how to the maintenance the bug problems the fertilizing yeah. the updates and, and just the... sharing like i yeah. i know that you know it's everything looks so beautiful out here and i think just i love walking around just kind of like you know touring and talking and mm -hmm. and and if i, I like do that, that today i can do it again next week because everything looks so different by then mm -hmm. and and we're and, eating different things in the garden every yeah time yeah and... so we just you know, now we can just kind of share it all and, and you know, yeah. everybody enjoys but it. But last so. night we did have someone come and film Jason and I do the June Garden yeah. tour. It was the first time we've ever had anyone film us and it's going to be the one of the first times that we've had anybody um, edit the videos for us. So um, other than one other video. Yeah, and he, here, but, he did um, a great job too. But yeah. we've, so uh, we used a friend of ours, Jeff, and he has a... Um, photography business and he mm -hmm. does you know videos as well so mm -hmm. I know this is the first time for a video like what we had him do but I'm, I'm excited to, I'm excited to, to, to see, see the, yeah. the video where Casey and I just got to interact and mm -hmm. 
and kind of show you around the, the garden. And it'll and... be a pretty long video because we, we do go into each bed. We go into the varieties. We discuss some of our favorites. We talk about some of the problems we have and some of the ways that we're trying to solve them in the garden. So there's a lot of information in that June garden tour. And um, we had him do where, you know, we're talking, but we also had him do footage. So there's layover pictures. So you can see up close when we're talking. We had him even come in and do some drone views with the video. So yeah. we're really excited to kind of like give a little different feel um, for for that video, but keep it kind of similar because um, he does watch our videos. So he knows kind of that feeling that we like to provide. And I, I feel like that's kind of our our niche. It's it's an even more smaller niche for, for viewers, but um, that's what makes us different. And that's, and that's what we love about gardening is just right. sharing it and spending time as a family and sharing those, um, those values and the knowledge and the upbringing of our kids and how we want to share this with everybody once our projects are done. So the documentation of the property, you know, I mean, there's always just so much going on Definitely. and, um, we just love sharing it with all of you guys. So thank you for saying that yeah. you like the videos. It, yes. it means a lot. Um, someone else where we got our, our string lights from. So I'll put a link in the description for uh, the garden lights that we used, the Agro Thrive, the Monterey Bug Spray, the neem oil that we used, and the Red Hose End. So yeah. you got it all up there, hon. You do. Don't need to write it down. Yep, but you know what you forgot? <laughs> I do normally write everything down. You know what you forgot? Um... Well, tell me because I'll, I'll i'm just kidding oh okay <laughs> <laughs> now i feel like i did forget something but you probably did <laughs> <laughs> um do you cut off the runners from your strawberries i heard it produces more fruit don't know if that's true um i don't know if that's true either we've um the only time i cut off runners is if they're running off the edge of our raised beds because then they'll start growing right into the gravel so um, it's kind of funny because what I do is actually take a weed whacker and I just go right along the side of our raised bed and I just cut them. But I don't know if it's true about helping it produce, but I would almost think, you know, just like anything, when you cut back different things that the, the plant is really focused on, if you cut that off, it'll focus on something else on that plant, you know, so that could be true. Yeah, definitely. But I, I don't know for sure. But if someone else knows that, then please share it in the comments. Yes. Um, so Tracy from South Africa says that it's winter there. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's correct. So, so I wonder what the, yeah. what, what the temperature is. Yeah. Um, Fahrenheit, if you know. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Because um, for us, winter is, you know, teen degrees and snow. So I'm wondering what yes. is your winter, our summer or our fall, you know? Yeah, yes. I'm curious. Yep. I don't know. Um, any tips for minimal space gardening in apartment blocks? I would say, you know, we've had experience with uh, the veggie pod. The veg oh, pod. Yeah, yeah. And you can get them in, in different sizes. It's a it's a raised garden bed mm -hmm. and it's a kit that you can put together. It comes with a little watering system inside if you want to use it and a cover. Mm -hmm. So it keeps things out. Um, that would be, you know, nice and efficient. Yeah, I or think you could that, that build, would be really nice. You could build your own raised beds too. Yeah, and I, I do feel like the way that we plant up our raised beds would be if we were dealing with a small space and trying to plant as much as For we sure. can in one box. Yep. Um, so maybe like our style of planting the raised beds would definitely be something you'd be interested in. And um, the June garden tour video that'll be coming out that may be very beneficial for you to kind of see the spacing along with, you know, when we were planting our raised beds, we did two videos showing how we plant our raised beds and not all of them, but most. And um, that, that may also be beneficial for you to kind of see because we do tend to keep plants a little closer um, than what you normally would in a ground bed if you have a ton of space. Um, and, and I mainly just do that because I, I like my beds to look full and I space them just enough for them to produce just as well. So. Right. Well, Cindy, this is definitely, uh, I think one of my favorite comments that, uh, that I've, that we've had here. Um, she says, it's obvious that Casey is a true artist, but Jason is the most supportive partner slash friend Aww. and is dang cheerful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Very kind words <laughs> from both of us there. He definitely is a good partner. <laughs> yep. Um, 
you know, Jason's always been the one to stand behind me from the beginning. Even when I had so many people close to me not supporting what I was doing, Jason just kept saying, go, go, go. And there were so many times that I just wanted to quit just so, you know, everybody was happy with it, happy with me, happy with my choices of gardening. Can you believe that? But <laughs> Jason was just like, you know what? You do you, you love gardening. You have this unique way of gardening. Just share it. I believe people are gonna like it and, and do it in your own way, you know? Cause I was like, you know, I don't wanna be, you know, showing things like um, Garden Answer and, you know, cause like she does such a great job. And, 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 and I think that she kind of has her niche, you know? Oh, yeah. To where I didn't wanna just, um, you know, show how to's and, and it, it would be hard to compete. Cause I mean, she's amazing at it. <laughs> And, um, you know, and, and that's not me though, either. I, I like to show how I do things, but I also like to share more about gardening in a way of um, the, the feeling, um, the projects, the fun, the excitement, um, the, the family gathering and the way we eat and, and have fun and play and um, have like this playful garden show. And, um, you know, over the years, we've just kind of been gradually transforming it into that and now I feel like we finally have that feeling starting last year was when I feel like we finally um, figured out our um, recipe for our channel yeah. and um, and that's when we started this winter we went from the Lawrence Network to the Lawrence Garden Farm and um, changed the whole channel name and we just realized this is what this is what it is this is yeah. what I, this is what it is you know and it, it's a really small niche so not everyone's going to love it but you know what I, I feel like we're, we're putting out good information we're putting out um, great family fun and entertainment that's clean for the whole family um, you know we're, we're just sharing a lot and, and we're sharing the documentation of building something that we can share with everyone one day yeah. You know, and, and that's what we're looking the most forward yes. to is, is, and I'm so happy Jason's on board because I need these. I need these. <laughs> got to continue to work. We've <laughs> still got lots of stuff to do before we can. Uh, can open. It'll be a while. Yeah. It'll be yep. a while because we have some really big plans and we want to make it so that way we aren't actually living here. We want this to actually be the business location and and use the house for for different needs and then um just this would be our our place of of business and in the community to host little field trips for school students they can come and have their little workshops and learn about plants and bees and butterflies yep. and just have it be magical and then we are also starting to try to get into more of like the trial gardening so we can start trialing different new plant varieties and share all those with you um perennials shrubs trees shrubs and trees are kind of a new area for jason and i right now yeah and, um so it's just i'll let you talk yeah I'm sorry so i'm I'll, very i just love i just love what we're doing yeah so, I, so we're we're excited <laughs> and i did like talk about it in the beginning of the video but there's more people watching now and so one of the things that we're going to be doing like casey said is you know trial gardens and and showing certain things that that we will actually kind of have as as our own plant line that if you know you wanted to order you know instead of going to a garden center it's kind of like an online garden center is well, what we're trying to Well you would still to, go you know. to a garden center because everybody loves going to a garden center yeah. but it's just more like you know for um, ahead of time really or during the season yep. like during or the season too the garden like, centers out of, right. of what you have you know so mm -hmm. we'll basically um our goal would be to put out videos in you know february march and even april so before garden centers open at least in in our area here and basically show and kind of showcase and show the things that you would be able to purchase through our website and then we have a, a large nursery here in wisconsin that we're working with right now and that's where the plants would be grown and shipped from and we've had some experience with getting um, plants shipped online and trees shipped mm -hmm. online this year uh, it was the first time that we tried it out this year and it really worked well to where we said you know what this is definitely mm -hmm. something that anybody can mm -hmm. can do and the plants come just as healthy as they would if you were going to a garden center and yeah. getting them but, so. Yeah, but in not that like, you know, anybody would ever stop going to a garden center because 
you know, when you're a garden lover or say you have no idea what you even want, it's really nice to just be able to go to a garden center. But what's really nice about, I feel like what we're trying to get into is not only host these great things for the youth to kind of educate them on gardening and the and what gardening really truly is and means, not only for eating or viewing, but also what it means here. Um, you know, is also then providing for us grown-ups, since we already know what it feels like, yep. um, the trial gardens. And the trial gardens are what you can actually visually see and then order, which would right. be nice too. Right. Um, but we're going to start this very slowly. This is going to be something that <clears throat> isn't going to also be like, all right, we're up and running. There's, you know, thousands of different things to choose from Anything you see here, you can get. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be like one or two <laughs> items to kind of you know, transition into that and, and to see how things work that way. And um, it's going to be a learning curve for us. But, um, you know, because we were actually already looking at a garden center right. this year. Right. So, it's something that we, you know, have, have kind of considered. Um, but I think ultimately we feel like, you know, what we're doing here and if we could do uh, what we're thinking about doing online – yeah. Um, it just, it's a better scenario for us, you yeah. know, cause with the garden center, you know, we need to be there every day, all day. Um, and especially in the beginning, you can't just hire people and have them working right. there. You, you need to be there as, as the owner. Um, so it's just, we, we, we really like our lifestyle yeah. and, and what well, we have going it would, here. It and, would kind of like, it would kind of change up, um, and transition our mission for a while. Like it would kind of like, um, right. So we wouldn't you know, be able to keep building what we're building here as much because the, the place that we were looking at would have needed a lot of work and attention. And we would have wanted to kind of do what we have here there so that mm -hmm. if people were to come in, we would have those trial gardens so they could purchase what they see in our raised beds, you know, fully grown. So they know how it, it's going to look. It would have been a way for us to open up quicker, but it would have, I think, taken away from the specialness of what we're doing it would just become like just a, a go-to business rather than you know what we're really trying to create here which i think is very special jason full-time is a home builder and i'm full-time mom and gardener here in head of our youtube channel jason and i run it together but i do a lot of the filming and editing um so that takes up a lot of our time yep. and um together i feel like our um, attention would then be kind of separated from the kids a little bit more too and not as focused on their needs and to me that just like hurt my heart when I just thought about that too you know like oh yeah this is all such a good idea to get this garden center but then I'm like you know what I, I just it just hurt my heart when I thought about like the kids having to be dragged here and there and you know with mom and dad and I could just see them you know kicking their feet in the stones like I don't want to go there again you know I wanna, yeah you know, I just, I, we, why, why ruin a good thing when we're right. focused on our path of something positive? And yes, it's not going to happen right away for us to open. But I said to Jason, I said, I believe that what we're doing here is extremely important, especially in the world today. There needs to, you know, like it's just going to be this positive place for anyone and everyone and a great educational resource. And, um, making gardening easy for people and um, try to do some things that would make it more affordable keep even like for for like youth programs have it be a little bit more um, like more of like a donation style for that because we want to do like um, events here as well and um, you know like small parties and um, uh, different events and that that could be where we make more money but I feel like with the programs it should be like where you know anybody could afford to learn how to garden here and i just feel like that's more important than our own personalized like well let's do this you know when jason already has this full-time job right now and all i'm saying is let's not ruin a good thing right now <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah no I, yeah that's i mean that's what we you know talked about and agreed on and yeah um lisa says i want to thank you again for the nighttime video you shared it was a beautiful escape into your garden and I appreciated it. Aww. So that was the, the most recent video that we put out, which we thought was real special too. It wasn't, you know, there, there wasn't gardening lesson in that, but it was more just like, you know, how we are 
as a family and enjoy the gardens. And we yeah. love creating those types of videos. That's kind of what Casey was, was just talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see here. Thank you kindly. You're both truly beautiful inside and out. Well, thank Aww, you very much for so that. Sweet. Um, Everyone's always so sweet and we appreciate all of the support yeah, because we know you could be watching anyone right now. You could be watching any channel or any show on TV. I mean, with Netflix, it's unlimited. So, I mean, you know, we're just so grateful that you are right here right now just hanging out with yep. us and it means a lot. Uh, may I ask how the t-shirts are going? Oh yeah, t-shirts. Yep. <clears throat> t-shirts are, uh, are available. Um, I'm gonna, I, you know, I just want to kind of tweak something a little bit too before we kind of put that up in live and um, that's pretty much like on the fit. I had to wait until I washed a few shirts to kind of see how they wash so then that way I can write in the description, you know, like don't ever wash because it will shrink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you like this shirt, don't ever wash it. <laughs> um, there was one that shrunk pretty bad. So I, I just want to make sure that before we go live with it, I, I actually remove that option out of there. Yeah, and I we, didn't even we gave it to it. Fuzzy, so no. she wears it now. No. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see here. Um, oh, you're, yeah. Somebody says you're, well, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. And she is one... Um, Thank you for always being there and commenting and supporting. But she says, our chair backs give us wings. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do. We look like butterflies. Little butterflies, yeah. <laughs> oh, so speaking of butterflies, and we talked about this in our podcast today, which is called the Lawrence Garden Farm. And um, <clears throat> the girls are actually raising a monarch caterpillar right now. So um, it, it grows so fast. We, You know, I always thought I, I knew about butterflies, but you don't really know about them until you raise them. And um, the girls are having such a blast. This thing is starting, we got it like when it was like this tiny, tiny little caterpillar. And it is just like eating now like crazy. It's like quadrupled. The yeah, size. it's it, just today. It, it pretty much, it seems like it doubles in size every, every day. day. And mm -hmm. um, it's been really cool watching it. And it's going to be really cool to see it go into a cocoon. And yeah. come out a butterfly because I mean we all know how that works you mm -hmm. know from science class but to to see it on a daily basis has been pretty it's, pretty it's enjoyable very different. So. yeah so we have to change the paper towel on the bottom every day we put a new milkweed leaf in you got to make sure it's milkweed that doesn't get sprayed with any type of pesticide or anything bad on it because they can get really sick and die and then oh the girls are going for a ride yep. and so um we, uh, we have a, we have quite a bit of milkweed kind of just growing in wild around the property. So I go and I pick a new leaf every day. Well, we all kind of do. Does she need help? Yeah, but she's got to oh, forward. Yeah, they're, they're going to ride their little um, hammer head. It's hammer time. <laughs> we always say it's hammer time when the girls get on their little go-kart. Um, but yeah, so we put in a new uh, milkweed leaf every day. And this caterpillar, like I just put one in this morning. And it's already eaten almost the entire leaf like since i would say probably since like 9 a.m this morning the whole leaf is almost gone and it's like so big now so i would assume that in a few days it'll be full grown and starting to make like its little cocoon on top don't you think like in a few days i would days. think so yeah 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 so we're so, excited to and, see and it, uh, we, we've been kind of documenting it a little bit, but not too much, just, just cause it's our first one. So if we documented it and then killed it, we'd feel extremely bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's just try it on our own first. Right. And then we can share with everyone our our way of doing it. You know, I wouldn't want to share a way of how to raise it and then it dies. You right, know? So absolutely not. We're still learning, so mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for our uh, our live session this afternoon. and. We'll be back next Wednesday, so we are are definitely gonna be more consistent. We just, you know, like Casey said, had yeah. some uh, things we needed to get done here, and so we will yeah. uh, see you next. Uh, see you next Wednesday. Yep, next Wednesday. Well, before that, because we'll have videos coming out before that. So, yeah. but we'll be live next Wednesday. Yep. So. Okay. Well, take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for.